our next speaker uh, is uh, not just any lady. She has worked for the UN for a long time and uh, also saw a lot of opportunities uh, in mobile developments to make a real impact uh, in Africa. Uh, there's not an issue that she doesn't address, it seems. Life and social skills, well-being, uh, women's issues, al alcohol and substance abuse, teenage pregnancy, racism, HIV AIDS, uh, cyberbullying even, career planning, confidence, the works. And uh, she works on mobile apps to um, basically learn uh, people how to uh, deal with these issues in the way of gamification. Please give it up for Agnes Fury. enough yes thank you can you just come forward that, does, that didn't sound like me I didn't recognize myself from that introduction <laughs> but my name is Agnes as she introduced me I'm from Afros and Afros actually is short for African heroes and that's exactly what our two previous speakers were trying to to also share with us and how we empower Africans to move to a place where the the rest of the world is. And what we do at Afros is basically we develop apps in a gamified, in a gamified way. Because now we know that young people actually learn through gamified learning. I don't think there's any young person in this generation who's going to read a big book and get what they need to do. Most young people now are sitting on social media, learning quick, quick, quick. And we're thinking gamified learning is the way the future generation should be going and that's where we want to, to focus. And we've been in operation since 2010. We're based in South Africa at the Innovation Hub, and an Innovation Hub is probably just like a science park where inventor, inv people who are in mobile space, ICT, are actually subsidized by government so that we can push more women and more young people into the ICT space. So one of our games that I'm going to focus on, we have four mobile games. They're actually free on Android and any, any phone that you have, you can actually download Moraba and just put hashtag Afros and you, you can play with the game. We have four games that we've developed since 2010. One is Moraba, which is an award-winning game to prevent issues of gender-based violence. And probably, as you know, we have a lot of issues of violence with young people in South Africa. So what we're trying to say is we have a new generation that's not so violent, that's tolerant of each other, and we're using a game to change that narrative. The other game we have is uh, actually Haki, and uh, I wanted to talk to the gentleman who first presented on the, on the tree planting, that maybe there could be collaboration with this uh, game that we've also developed. It was also done in Kenya uh, to help people how to save the environment by not cutting too much uh, trees and as you know in Africa in most communities people use trees for energy especially in rural areas So the idea for the game was to also how do we preserve that uh, environment? Haki 2 is actually was a game that was uh, asked to asked by, uh, by the Kenyan government in the second elections to stop the violence that went on in the previous e elections, so the game is actually to do with issues of human rights I may vote for a different party, I may have different ideologies, but at the same time, we're all human beings with different opinions and different outlooks to elections. So Haki helped the Kenyan government with that election, the previous election. Job Hunt is our latest game that was actually sponsored by Rockefeller Foundation. And Job Hunt, the concept in game design for us was, what does the future work look like globally? There's unemployment, especially for young people. And we're saying the future work actually is going to be online work. You can be sitting in Netherlands, I could be sitting in Africa, and as uh, Bart was saying, you can still do the work that side and get paid. You could be in India, you could be in Asia, you could be in America, but online work is the future work for young people. And we're trying to play with that game in terms of young, having young people explore this and see what competencies do you need to have as a young person to be able to compete online globally because that is very competitive as well. So that is one of the games that uh, we've developed. So basically what Afros does is we try to look at content that's so unique to issues that youth face. 
and our focus is usually youth. I know I've, people have said, no, focus also on the older generation, but I'm saying that the way we're going, I think the hope lies with the youth. So the focus should be youth because they're more adventurous, they explore more, they're more open, and that's what we try to focus on our, our games. But the topic is how do we reimagine all these apps that are being developed in Africa? How do we begin to reimagine that? Because it's a competitive space. It's predominant, predominantly male. And that's why I was asking about where are the females? You know, how do we start reimagining all this, considering the potential on, on uh, mobile apps have, considering where internet is going? And for one moment, I want to focus on the size of Africa, just to see the potential of what we're discussing. This is Africa. This is China, I think just covering sub-Saharan Africa. We've got United States probably covering a bit of North Africa and West Africa. We've got Eastern Europe sitting somewhere there east. We've got India sitting there on the east side of Africa. China, part two, part of South Southern Africa. Japan in Southern Africa. Netherlands, very tiny, up, up, up there. Portugal and the rest of Europe there. So that's the potential for Africa. That is why we need to reimagine where all this is going. How does Africa begin to find that space, begin to network, begin to partner, begin to be more engaged in where technology is going? Because if we don't, we're going to be left behind again. But more importantly is we need to also focus on the current issues that we have. It's no, it's no point in having issues that the West have or the advanced world has, but what are our issues? And that is where I think technology can make a difference. And for us, as Afros, we see these as general across the continent, not just in South Africa, but across the continent. It's the issue of youth. You know, the, they're not feeling like, you know, there's space for them, there's no employment, they're feeling like, you know, what next? You know, after I graduate, what next? There's just nothing out there. It's of course the issue of politics, which is very diverse. We sometimes can get into conflict, which displaces people, the issues of refugees, and et cetera, et cetera. The issues of human rights, which are very fundamental to any human being. The issue of environment that we need to tackle. The issue of informal business. Why informal business? Because 80% of people in Africa are actually in informal business. And how do we help that group of people as well move and make some money out of the informal business that they've, they've known for generations? and the issues of poverty, and the issues of health, and the issues of rural upliftment. If most of our countries in Africa are rural-based, and how do we also bring in that group of people to be able to also benefit from technology? And the issues of education, which we are saying that this is going to change, it's no longer going to be blackboard, it's going to be iPad-based. And how do we bring this group of people also there. Like, of course, the issues of culture. I think every nation, every community has its own culture, and it's good to preserve that, and how do we also use technology to make sure this also is maintained. And we think that for Africa, these surrounding issues should be maintained. The issue of having a mission and purpose that people can buy in. If we're moving so, you know, technology changes every 24 hours. And if we have to have a mission and purpose from governments that are leading these people to say this is a mission and this is a purpose for technology that people can buy in and people can have hope in. Of course, the issue of in, 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 ingenuity and invention, transformation and development, imagination and creativity, games and leadership. Ubuntu just means humanity. That's, that's the translation. Ubuntu means humanity. You're a human being, I'm a human being, everybody's a human being despite the what people see beyond the, the face. So we're saying the games that we are, we, we've developed, like the Moraba game, which addresses issues of gender-based violence, it should be improved to include these issues that we now know that young people are facing. The issue of HIV AIDS. I know in South Africa, teenage pregnancy is an issue, so that also needs to be addressed. The issue of bullying, which has now become cyberbullying. In my time, I think, when I was bullied at school, it was one-to-one. -one. But now cyberbullying, someone can bully you on Facebook, 
10,000 people know about it. So we have another issue of bullying that young people are facing. The issue of confidence and self-esteem that obviously lead to your HIV issues because if you, your confidence is high, your self-esteem is high, there's no way you know, you're going to follow the peer pressure that happens amongst young people. And of course, the issues uh, of alcohol and drug abuse, which are getting extremely, extremely global, just, just in South Africa, but I think everywhere. And we're saying this, the issue of using mobile gamification can reach millions instantly than if you went class to class explaining all these issues. And the key ingredient, of course, will be in the way we tell the story through, through the mobile apps. And we are convinced that Afros that we have to invest in this new generation. From the time young people are going to preschool or kindergarten, that is where the technology should start. It shouldn't start at university. It shouldn't start like for most of our people by the time you, you actually know what internet is, you're actually in the first year at university. That's very, very sad. We should have government will that says from the time young people to go to kindergarten, they're also just as exposed to technology and internet and mobile and everything where the world is going at an early stage. So that takes political will. And we believe this is a generation that's going to be the custodian of all these things that we're having, we're having, we're having here. Can anybody tell me the 10 top mobile apps developed in Africa, if everybody, anybody knows about them? Anybody? Um, it's a pity. What's his name? Bart has gone? Oh, yeah. He might know. Any? Any idea? <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. But exactly what, you know, what we're saying about where Africa needs to be. There are actually 10 top mobile apps developed in Africa, amazingly enough. There's Find a Mate developed in Nigeria that just helps communities find the nearest clinic the nearest doctor, the nearest nurse or midwife, just using an SMS, you know, I'm here, I need this, and that helps. There's Pesa Cup developed in Kenya. It just helps people transact with e-commerce using their mobile phones. SnapSave developed in South Africa just helps you look for deals, you know, you compare prices, I need to buy this, I need to buy this, go to SnapSave, you're able to compare where you can get a good deal. One drop just helps you track if you bought something online, where is it, has it been delivered, etc., etc. That also developed in South Africa. Suba developed in Ghana. It's just a social media group photo albums which allows for creation of a group photo streams. Safari Tales developed in Kenya. It's just to help young African people also read tales about stories told in Africa. Slim Trader runs across the four countries there. It's also just transaction for e-commerce. And M Farm developed in Kenya just to provide farmers in rural areas up-to-date prices for crops so they can compete more competitively. So why are some apps able to monetize and some not be able to monetize? Because at the end of the day, we need to sustain our social enterprises. I know our apps haven't monetized. We haven't made so much money. We've been blessed that we've had a lot of grant money from Rockefeller Foundation, from the United Nations Women Program because of the issues that we, we address. But when that grant funding finishes, then you have a problem because your app is sitting without making money and you've got staff to pay. You need to sort of constantly upgrade your app. And I've, that, that's just my feeling. Obviously, investors, private sector, business would invest more on the other apps that I showed because they're more practical. People don't like soft skills. I'm talking about changing a generation. And if I went to, what is the biggest company in the Netherlands? If I went to a telecom company and said, give me money, and I'm talking about, oh, youth, social issues, you know, blah, blah, they'll be like, hmm, you know. But when you have that passion for, what does the next generation look like? You know, it's not about profits. It's not profit all the time. Sometimes it's about preserving the humanity because as we know, you presented, nature doesn't need us. I mean, sorry. Na yeah, nature doesn't need us, but we need nature. That's the sad part. So the human beings need to think differently where we want to be in 30 years' time. 
So that is where our challenge is in terms of monetizing our apps. Private sectors are not interested. Donor funding, most likely they will fund you, but in terms of sustaining ourselves, it's an issue. But all the same, we need to soldier on and rebirth Africa to where technology is going and to where mobile gaming is going. We need three things that we're very passionate about in Afros, and we keep telling this to governments, to whoever we go to, we told ourselves our mission will never change. Even if we closed our company today, that mission must remain. We need to innovative apps that position youth for success, because we're going. The older generation, us, you know, we're leaving this planet to our grandchildren and our children. So we need to have apps that position young people for success. We need apps being developed that can generate income to be sustainable. And of course, we need strong political will, meaningful support from government to support these apps. It was my first time in Netherlands, and I, the taxi, the, I got into a taxi, and the taxi driver was telling me this car is actually electric. I mean, this car looked so beautiful. I mean, it was just, I don't know, I've never felt so comfortable in this car. I mean, it was just smooth driving. I said to myself, electric? He says, yeah, electric. He showed me the engine. He showed me the dashboard. I mean, it was just so cool. I mean, I, I read these things. I see it on TV, but I've never thought I'd get in an electric car. I thought that was like 2050, way, up, way before I'm gone. But this is happening here. And of course, it took political will for that to happen. I don't think if the Dutch government was not keen to promote the electric car, it would have happened by itself. And that's the political will we need in Africa for these apps to move to that stage. Because it cannot happen just by ourselves with our passion and spreading the word. It needs government intervention to say, yes, this needs to happen, and we need to get behind it. And basically, I'm talking about monetizing the apps. Our apps right now are sitting on 57,000 downloads for Moraba. And for private company, they'll tell us you need to be above 100,000 Ks for us to invest into your apps. So now if you're sitting with four apps that has been developed with grant money and you're trying to promote them, you would need things like this, to develop global partnerships that help you think through your apps, help you promote them, talk to people, exchange ideas you know, across continents. How can we make this more exciting? Yesterday I was giving the same talk and I had some, some uh, young people from Brazil and they were saying, actually, when you develop, when you advance Moraba, talk to us so that we can have, we can have, because we fa we are facing the same issues as we have, we can actually develop it together so that it appeals to people in Brazil and also appeals to people in, in Africa. And those are the global partnerships I think we need to, 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 to follow. This is just a model on how we can also monetize. It's an issue of, you know, do we get an investor? Do we license the app? Do we subscribe it? Do we develop the content distribution, enhance it? Just to brainstorm how that should go. Or we use this other model. As a single product, we just sell it. This is just thoughts. This is now the stage where we are with our apps because it's been good. But now we need to say, we need to sustain ourselves. How do we push these, these apps in terms of being monetized? With Moraba, one of the, one of the, the award-winning mobile, the first one that we, we, we created, it actually has a backup system. So if we go in schools talking about the game, issues of gender-based violence, and engaging the principals, we are able actually to give the school the reports to say about 50% of your young men didn't understand what gender-based violence is, maybe you need to talk about this more. So this, we're thinking in terms of monetizing, maybe we could be actually giving the client the data and we sell the data. We don't know, but that's phase two of where we are at the moment. I've talked about this. And we've always wondered, why do we use technology designed for London and Los Angeles when we live in Nairobi or New Delhi? We should be looking at things that attract our audience, local content that can also make young people in our areas feel like, okay, I can do this for this market. We know that an app, once like our app sits on Android, it's, it's global. You know, anybody can download, and most of the downloads for us have been outside than inside. 
But this is the way I think we need to think as Africans in terms of, you know, what other technologies can we use? What are our issues? The same issues that I presented above, different issues for different countries, different issues for different contexts and cultures. No harm in that. It's just how do we move from that to where we are missing the opportunities. And the missed opportunities, I think, is we think are these. There could be more, but definitely we haven't yet, you know, got the sort of recognition in terms of, you know, what's being developed in Africa globally. That hasn't really happened. And yet, the continent is brimming with opportunities. If, I mean, if uh, our voice bat butters left, Tunga, I mean, you could see that there are so many soft, I mean, it's a pity there are no women developers, but it's got a lot of male developers there that are excite, excited about the work, want to do things. But if you came in, the potential is there. It's just a matter of how people are networking and, and uh, creating opportunities for themselves. These are the stats. Now, I wish there were business people sitting here, but that is the potential. 735 million by 2012, Africa had mobile phones. That's the potential of the business you can do and the content that you can you can share there. 450 million youth. Now, if we're talking about all that content that we're saying must be given to youth, if all these young people are sitting on mobile and they don't want to go to libraries, they get all the information there, I think that's the way we should be going. So basically, yeah, that's us, us at Afros to give hope to young people to say, I can change the world. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, thank Agnes. You, thank you, thank Did you. Did I understand it that this is, today is your first time uh, doing this uh, talk? No, I, I actually, this talk was on, uh, when did I arrive? Thursday, I've talked about it on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, okay. And I had a challenge yesterday, so. My piece of paper said this was your first time having this speech. I was like, no, that was amazing. No, Thursday. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've, I've been practicing. You have seen me first day. I was like, ooh. <laughs> Thank but, you yeah, so no, much. This is my third time. Third so time. do you have uh, some time for a round of questions, yes, maybe? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to ask questions, but I have this problem where I'm stuck in the back, and the sound is going that way. So you didn't hear anything. <laughs> I can see, like, I can see it like in reverse, uh -huh. like yeah. mirrors, yeah. and then, but, that, but that's about it. So, um, who here feels inspired to go home and uh, work on some ideas? Yeah, go ahead. I'm wondering, uh, how do you motivate and stimulate the youth to use your app? Sorry. How do you stimulate and motivate uh, the youth to use your use app? Because app. there are so many game apps. Yeah, so I know. Why, yeah. why would they use your yeah, app? And exactly. how do you stimulate them? Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yes, that's actually been the competing. Just to go back, why did we set up Afros? I have two sons. They're big now, so I won't, I won't review my age, but they've graduated, 26 and 28. And each time I came from work, those boys were sitting and playing meaningless games. You know when I say meaningless games? Sorry if you are young. But not the games that you kill somebody and you kill and you kill. And I'm thinking, wow, and these are boys. You know, so every day they're being fed with meaningless games. And they're like, ah, oh, mom, this is, this is the cool stuff. This is what everybody's playing. That is what actually made me and my friend do Afros. We're like, so, because there's no content in what other games they can play, they're going to play these meaningless games where they just, you know, kill kill and get points. So you kill and you get points. You kill and you get points. What generation are we creating? Yes, it's, it is very competitive, but what we've, what the angle we've used is to say we go through schools, so we don't like, you know, promote it to say, okay, this is, you know, we're going to compete with a thousand games online, but we go to schools and say, give us two hours during your life orientation program that young people can be also be exposed to Meaningful games, you know, if you play Moraba, you're gonna learn as a young man, you cannot abuse a young girl, you know, you can, you know, a date rape is not acceptable, certain comments are not acceptable. So we, we try to use government, the political will, to change those mindsets so that, you know, they can also say, oh, this was developed here, I can play with this game. Then shoot and kill, shoot and kill, 24 hours later, shoot and kill. When you could be engaged yourself learning about, you know, 
What does self-confidence mean? What does cyberbullying mean? What do human rights mean? What does it mean to have another race or another culture in your space? Things like that that can be like a game. So you end point, you play, you end a game. It's very hard. I cannot even pretend. But we try to push government, like knock on their doors to say, hey, you want a different generation? Get us in your schools. But it's not easy. Uh, that, it sounds like you are doing uh, like top-down uh, motivation, uh, reaching uh, to the government and then yeah, ask them yeah. to... Uh, yeah, to, to ask their, their, their yeah, youth. Yeah. But uh, is, isn't bottom up a better way to promote your app? It is, but as I said, I think let me just go back to. You see, when I, when I said probably our weakest thing has been. Uh, no, sorry. When I, when I said about, you know, we six, my company were just six, social enterprise, six, probably competing with Google, Microsoft, you know, but we are six, three ladies and three, uh, and three guys, six of us. So yes, maybe sometimes we get so caught on in the concept development and the app development that we don't have the skills to market, you know, to say, oh, how do you market a game? How do you push it out there? And that is, we've recognized that as a weakness, and maybe we need to do that more. As we now try to look at how we are going to enhance our products, how do we market more than just focus on content development and, you know, outreach? Not easy when you're six people always looking for cash flow and, you know, we're going to pay rent, we're going to pay salaries. Yeah, not easy. But we believe that, you know, the more we can push government, the way we can get it on Facebook and things like that, the more we can come here, get, you know, other people to talk to, change, you know, change ideas. Who knows? We'll get there. <laughs> but maybe if you have some ideas yeah, on how, exactly, how you can make it exactly. better, you should... You you know, should uh, maybe you can come and sit with us for three months and, you know, <laughs> do the marketing strategy for us. <laughs> you should continue this conversation. Yeah. You know, I really recognize what you're saying. I had a boyfriend who was crazy about Call of Duty. Uh -huh. And at one point in time, I just felt like the living room would turn into a war, war zone. zone. I know. <laughs> so maybe when you're done with Africa, you can come and help us here. With the, with, yeah, with the Because we, yeah. we, yeah. Also, yeah. we know nothing. <laughs> Yeah, but and I I'm think we need some on and do this. I think we also need some yeah. like a bit more peaceful I games, know, maybe. Exactly. I think that would be good. Because, uh, too, too much violence there on the up games. I see another question here. Hi, thanks for the talk. This is not a question, but rather a comment um, related to the previous question. Actually, um, I saw recently a professor at Oxford University started um, an app in Kenya yes. uh, teaching adults first aid skills through yeah. a, through yeah. a game. Um, and because they have to repeat the processes, yeah, yeah. they learn the first aid um, skills kind of by heart and are then much better prepared for crisis situations. Yeah. So, I mean, I think elderly, more elderly people as well as youth are also kind of a good target audience. Yeah, and, you can, you, yeah. and they would probably be more receptive because I think re regardless, yeah. kids <laughs> always do like the, yeah, the more yeah, fun games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll try. We'll Thank try. You. Do you think there's a future for uh, games for elderly? There is, but we've decided, you know, when, you know when you're a small company, you don't want to be everywhere. So we've decided, let's just focus, focus. on the youth. And because we use our children as free sounding board, you know, test it. So yeah, we use that free resource. I go back and I tell my boys, what do you think? You know, what should I change? But we just think the youth is for us, yeah. that's the focus. The elderly then will be everywhere and then we'll lose our our mission and focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kids are the future. Are but the of future. course, in, in, in uh, 60 years, these 60, 70 years, these kids are going to be elder. They exactly. Maybe they'll, they'll still be, be playing your games. Yes. <laughs> and they used to be Afros. They were so backwards and, you know, what they presented. So, <laughs> yeah. Are there any other uh, questions? I see like a... <laughs> more of a remark than a question. Uh, so thanks for the very nice talk. I, I really uh, like your approach, but um, I have a, a critical remark uh, regarding one of your first points, which was about uh, the, the growing trend that uh, y for youth not to read books. Oh, sorry. And yeah. so you, you said you regard games, um, you know, you, you can yeah. see, yeah. yeah. 
they gain more and more ground and uh, w w youth have forgotten about books. So I think um, with the drive you have and the impact you want to have uh, the world, if we if youth end up not reading books, mm. you will not we will not get there. We will not yeah. get into a better world. So uh, games are uh, important and useful for many ways, and as you already uh, do. Um, but perhaps you should uh, rethink of that assumption and maybe invent an app you that indeed uh, yeah, read, yeah. opposes this trend and mm. works on people reading books because I really think that yeah, would make the, the yeah. world population of better quality in many ways. Definitely, definitely, yeah. That's a great point. I think it's a good point. Yeah. yeah, if we can get funding, I think we'd also maybe develop an app that gamifies it's cool to read. You know, because, yeah, I think it's a, good, it's a valid point. You just made the world a better place just by <laughs> this one comment. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Uh, you'll be available to uh, have a little chat if people want to talk to you one-on-one -on -one next to the stage. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Can <laughs> I just use this stage? I wanted to just, no, I missed half of his presentation on the tree planting. Yeah. And I think we're also very passionate about the environment. I, I did want to get his card and see how we go. Now we, uh, we have Habitat, the UN, has asked us for, for the for Haki 2, the one on environment, and maybe what you're doing in Kenya already might... Magic in the making yeah, right here. Yeah, Magic in the making. Of, of, uh, Excellent. How do, we, how do we plant trees and yet we need them for energy? How, you know, how does that... Yeah. There should be a game for that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, thank Agnes. You, Please give you. a warm applause for Agnes Curie.